500 moles per hour of a 40% acetic acid, 60% vinyl acetate feed must be separated. Use cross-current liquid-liquid extraction with water as a solvent to achieve this purpose. This problem should look very familiar. I've just slightly reformulated it a little bit. Uh, I wanted to go through how you would go about figuring out what the minimum flow rate of solvent that you would need to feed to the first stage in order to uh, get anything to happen. Um, we've talked about minimum flow rate of solvent before. Uh, minimum reflux ratio is kind of related to that idea. In both distillation and absorption stripping context, the minimum flow rate of solvent was related to the maximum number of stages. But here in liquid-liquid extraction, it is going to be related to where the mixing point is such that I get a mixing point that will phase separate. So let's go through on the diagram to plot the points. My feed point is there. The flow rate is 500 moles per hour. My solvent is pure water, and I have to figure out what the minimum amount of solvent that I need to feed is. So let me go through and plot my mixing line here. Remember, the mixing line tells me uh, all combinations of uh, mixing these two streams that I could possibly have. So in the limiting case, let's say I, I have something very, very small for a solvent flow rate, maybe, I don't know, 10 moles per hour um, being mixed with the feed. In that case, my mixing point would be very, very close to the feed because 10 is so far uh, below 500. And if this were my mixing point, this mixing point wouldn't work uh, for liquid-liquid extraction because it's in the one phase region. So therefore, if I only added 10 moles per hour of solvent and then I send it to the settler, it wouldn't decan, it wouldn't phase separate. I would just have a three component system now. So the idea here is that I have to add enough solvent such that my mixing point at least has to lie on the equilibrium line. And then if I have a mixing point that is on the equilibrium line, I can still draw a tie line across and I could still figure out what my extract phase and my raffinate phase. Of course, the raffinate would be about the same as the mixing point. And in this case, uh, extract would be very, very small. So extract is about zero in this case, if I had the minimum number of solvent. But still, figuring out what the minimum number uh, amount of solvent is can be useful for doing a evaluate type problem because it at least gives you some idea of what the limits of your problem are. Um, so I said that if this is the mixing point, that is going to correspond to the minimum uh, solvent rate. So let's go ahead and get a um, composition of that point. So we want the composition of this mix point. So go ahead and pause the video, practice reading these diagrams. I'll see you in a second. Welcome back. I've drawn red lines here to help you visualize uh, what the um, composition should be. I get 32% acetic acid. I get 48% um, um, nope, I'm going to say 47% uh, vinyl acetate uh, meaning my other let's see this should make sense to me my favorite part of reading these diagrams, sometimes you have to retroactively go back and convince yourself uh, what you're reading. That's normal. Uh, I go through it. Everybody goes through it. I'm going to say it's 33% acetic acid, 48% uh, vinyl acetate, and then my other 19% is water. So the reason I, I was uh, hesitating there is because the original way that I read it meant that I had to have 20% water, which would be right on this line, and that wasn't the case. So again, in, in real life, you would no real engineer actually solves these problems by drawing lines on diagrams. You have process uh, simulation software that helps you with all this stuff. The goal of this class is to understand what the process simulating software is doing. So just keep that in mind. Um, now that I've got my composition of my mixing point, I can now do material balances. I know what my feed was. My feed is 500 moles per hour. So my unknown variable here is S, and I have uh, three material balances that I can solve for. Also, M is unknown too, so I need to pick two out of the three material balances. I always pick the overall material balance because it's the easiest. 500 plus S is equal to M, 
And I will pick a water balance as well to solve. So I'll get um, S is equal to M times 0 0.19. Two equations, two unknowns. Uh, I can simply plug in for S in this case. So I can say 500 plus 0 0.19 M is equal to M. And then uh, M will be equal to 500 divided by 0.81 m is equal to 617 moles per hour, meaning that s must be m minus 500 or 117 moles per hour. So this is again the minimum that I have to feed. And this type of analysis is useful because if some of your, if a colleague comes to you and says, well, let's feed 100 moles per hour of solvent to the first stage, you can back that person up and say, well, we have to at least feed 117 moles per hour or else it won't work. So it's a way to narrow down what the design space is. And that'll be very useful for in the next video when we have to figure out what the solvent flow rate is that we have to feed to each stage. It'll help us inform our decision a little bit.